dominate the basketball game to put them in the finals. Sunbelt Reynolds starting lineups, Cunningham in the center of a starting lineup that scored 89 of Asheville's 96 in the win over Radford yesterday, and Winthrop featuring the two Keons in the backcourt, Andre Smith, Larry Brown, and Joab Jerome. A couple of and a chance to get his team in his first year to the championship game. So here we go, semifinal number one, a date in tomorrow's title at noon on the line. And UNC Asheville in the white jerseys with the first opportunity this afternoon. Interesting, saw both coaches, they walked in the building, the sun was shining, they were smiling, everybody was happy. Now it's time to go to work. This is Hughes on the clear out, left it short, Jerome the rebound. Winthrop did just enough yesterday with its three-point shooting. It's something they've relied on throughout the season, did not shoot the ball particularly great in the quarterfinal win over High Point, but of course the most important three-pointer went down, and Andre Smith nailed it at the buzzer. That's a tough ball away, but it's good from Keon Johnson. Robertson in his face, but the young man had a little step back and he stuck it. Keon Johnson, an all-freshman selection this year. Not a big body, but a huge heart. Nice defensive play. Jerome closed out the lane for Hughes. The Eagles look to extend the early lead. Jerome goes sprawling, but no whistle as the three ball comes off the mark. Here's Rousey going coast to coast, and the foul whistled. As he approached the basket, Andre Smith, before the block shot by Jerome, got him. And Rousey will head to the, the foul line. Early in the season, Andrew Rousey was a three-point jump shooter, period. He has become a basketball player. He drove a bunch of times yesterday. Right there, he just kept going until somebody stopped the ball. Nobody did. Got to the rim. He's going to try to pay off a couple right here. But the young man came in very good, and he's actually improved a lot in his freshman year. That's a great asset to him, to his coaching staff, and his Coach McDivitt will tell you to his dad. And his dad got him playing the game at a very young age. Out of Lexington, Virginia. And he gets his first two today. He scored the first two for Asheville yesterday. Had 22 in the first half. <laughs> scored a lot more than two. And then he turned it over to Cunningham and Jerron Lane to take care of business in half number two. But Rousey finished with 27. Had a phenomenal shooting day. Going 10 of 15 from the field. And here's an Asheville foul. David Robertson will pick up the personal. Johnson sets up the offense. And then a little hesitation dribble goes by the freshman Robertson and draws the contact and the foul. Well, they called that foul on Robertson, but it sure looked like Cunningham yeah. was the man who really applied the contact coming over on the help side. As Johnson had uh, already driven past Robertson, the free throw no good for the freshman out of Mansfield, Ohio. Now something to watch for UNC Asheville, Nate. They played only seven players yesterday. It was not a deep rotation. We talked about how the starters scored almost every point of the basketball game as Corey Littlejohn checks in for Robertson. So it's a very delicate rotation system for a team that does like to get up and down the floor. This is not a walk it up type team. They're very aggressive offensively. Well, basically it's it's uh, Corey Littlejohn in the backcourt for a sub and Jaleel Roberts in the frontcourt for a sub. And that's it. And the five starters, obviously. Jerron Lane takes it in on Moore and a tough shot over size. And Jerron Lane can really do that against any defender in this league. He's a tremendous player. He uses his length exceptionally well and in opportune times to get off shots over sometimes guys bigger than he is. Boy, did he have a second half yesterday. Well, Lane sure did. Ended up a 29 total for the game. 24 in the second half as Smith misses his first try of the day. Asheville with the one-point lead. Asheville just never loses their composure. That's what I like about them. Obviously, they're talented. Boy, is that a mismatch inside with Jerome trying to play, and they see it too. Got to double him. He can't play him one-on-one. -on -one. Nice pass out and rotate the basketball. And the quick trigger by Rousey. He got hit on the arm by Keon Johnson, and three free throws coming for Andrew Rousey to underscore that point. I think what they do extremely well is understand when to delineate between early offense and set offense. They get in and out of that very well. Well, look at Cunningham. He knows he's got a mismatch, but he doesn't force anything. He waits for the double team to come to rotate the ball, and then the freshman gets popped, and Rousey's going to go to the line for three free throws. So Cunningham, Rousey. Cunningham impressed me so much with the, oh, everything he did yesterday. 
this kid's ridiculous. I mean, he's going to be something to talk about for a lot of years. But Cunningham, they were good. They were just really good yesterday. If something is there when they get down the floor off a missed shot, they'll try to take advantage and get the early points. But as we illustrated after that, the ball into Cunningham work inside out. And he doesn't force things. He know, I mean, for a first-year head coach, Coach McDivitt has really got them believing in the system. And it's not drastically different than it was when he was the assistant, but it's his ball game. It's his system. And a tough pass by Keon Moore for Larry Brown off the hands and out of bounds. And Winthrop maybe a little bit rusty here in the early few minutes. They had the, the nail biter yesterday. A lot of emotion exhausted in that victory over High Point with the final shot. Nashville never really had a major push from Radford, it got close four or five points in the last three or four minutes as Cunningham misses the jump hook, but the Bulldogs had a nice comfortable margin the majority of the game yesterday in the second quarter final. Jerome, a powerful drive, and he draws contact. Both teams do a great job. We'll talk about Asheville when they get the ball, but talking about Winter, a great job of spacing. Joe Jerome, we had a great angle to see it. It's right where we were looking at the basket. But there was no postman on his side. He had a straight line drive, which Coach Calipari and the great dribble drive teams talk about. And he took it right to the rim and got fouled. Josh Davenport has checked in for Winthrop. His first action, he has the ball here. Oh, <laughs> little John had a dunk if he stole that one. Had to jump the pass. Oh, Larry Brown, that's a tough angle, but somehow gets it to go with the left hand over D.J. Cunningham. Larry Brown showed a lot of heart in that win yesterday as well. I mean, those big guys are not 6'10", 6'11", but they're long, they're very athletic, and, man, do they play hard. Jerome giving Hughes all kinds of trouble defensively. They play the personality of the coach. Coach Kelsey right top of your pitch right there, directing the traffic on defense. You can't back off him. I'm telling you, he'll shoot it from there. There he goes. Over the top of Moore, oh. and what a rainbow jumper from Andrew Rousey. Keon Moore, you want to back up on me? I'll teach you not to do that. That's what the kid does. You can't back off him. Now, this is similar to yesterday when Rousey had the 22-point first half. He's off to eight points out of Asheville's 10 today. Moore answers. There we go. Right back at Rousey as they trade three-pointers. I tell you, he's really good going to his left, too, with that left hand. You can tell the young man spent hours in the gym working on it. Rousey uh, back door to Little John, and they call a tripping foul on Andre Smith, and that will be his second foul. Pat Kelsey saying that Little John lost his footing under his own power. We've got our first time out, 15-23. And Andrew Rousey has been the key so far with eight of the Bulldogs' ten points, just as we saw yesterday. A hot start for the freshman of the year. He likes these rims. He just ran into Keon Moore, and he's hurting. They're both hurting. I think they banged knees, actually. Unintentional. Loose ball, and after it, Davenport, Lane, and a held ball will give the possession over to Winthrop. Now, Andre Smith, just before our timeout a moment ago, picked up his second foul, so... The hero yesterday for Winthrop now on the bench. And right after all that, there it is right there. And afterwards, they both just slapped five. So, they, you know, you okay or you okay? Unintentional. They just got caught up with each other. Luckily, neither of them got hurt. Brandon Vega at the point now for Winthrop. He's checked into the game. James Bourne down in the post. And those two try to work something there. Oh, and no part of Cunningham inside. I mean, Bourne drove base on a couple times from that spot. He's pretty good off the dribble. Oh, look at this. Got his hand in there, the loose ball, and we'll have another tie-up in the possession over to UNC Asheville this time. Two games in the regular season between these teams, very different results. The contest that was played up at Asheville was an easy UNC Asheville victory. They won by 15, 81-66, and then they played a classic in the final week of the regular season in Rock Hill. Winthrop won that one, 107-100 in overtime. ABA basketball day going back to Dr. J. That's a lot of numbers. Little John got a look and misfires over Vega. Cunningham, the rugged rebound, and draws the contact and the collision. 
And the foul whistle on Winthrop's James Bourne. A lot of kids 6'10", a lot of kids as big as Cunningham. But look at the way he just runs around Bourne. He just has a nose for the basketball. He was blocked out, but he didn't quit on the play. Offensive rebound is all about wanting it more than the other guy. stick to it -iveness. And he does it right there. He's going to get a chance for a couple of points because of it. Josh Davenport got the worst end of that one for Winthrop as uh, Cunningham fell right on top of him, the 6'10", 240 redshirt senior. Cunningham yesterday, an epic day rebounding the basketball as you see Tevin Prescott check in for the Eagles. 19 rebounds that tied a Big South tournament record for most rebounds in a game, and it set a quarterfinal record. And the all-time record had stood for 15 years, going back to 99, Hassan Groves of Winthrop put up 19 in the championship game. And you and I talked, he would have had 20, except for the fact that um, Radford made the last four shots. They didn't miss a shot. He would have got a defensive board. He got every other one. Give and go, Jerome and Bourne set him up deep inside. Bourne couldn't finish over the size of Cunningham. Here's the breakout for Jerron Lane. Oh, this is, oh, Rousey, you got to get it back. You got Bourne guarding you. There he goes. Watch this. Over the top of Bourne, and he left it short. That's a really good shot, too. Good block out by Joe Jerome against Cunningham to get the ball. Vega steps into a good-looking mid-range jumper, and Brandon Vega's first basket of the day, the red shirt junior from Miami. Two-point game. Little John quickly counters, and I talked about it earlier, Nate. That's something they look to do as the early offense. Well, they're going to go down the floor. Corey Little John's 100 miles an hour. You don't stop the ball, they're going to the rim. You hear teams talk about getting out on transition on misses. And Asheville does a tremendous job on made shots. And here's a transition. Cunningham starts with another block. And a charging foul. Little John ran in to Brandon Vega. He wanted to pass it, but he got up in the air kind of in no man's land. You know, and speaking to the Asheville people when we started all this, watch this. He gets up near and wants to pass, and he's just, you got to jump stop. That's all. Cunningham is a great blocker of shots, but he doesn't block them in the fourth row. He tips them, and he keeps them in bounds, as evidenced by that one. And Little John just uh, created the offensive foul. But he blocks the ball and keeps it in play. It's a great asset blocking it. It's even better when you can keep the basketball and not give it back to the team who just shot it. Cunningham takes a rest, not far away from the next media timeout. And you can see Coach McDivitt kneeling down right at the top of your picture, right in front of Cunningham, talking to him specifically. Tough pass by Vega, deflected out of bounds. So Jaleel Roberts, the seven-footer out of Evans, Georgia, in now for Asheville to replace that man, DJ Cunningham. Who played very well yesterday when he went in to replace Cunningham. And it's tough to play better than Cunningham did yesterday. But Jaleel Roberts, they didn't skip a beat. Boy, Prescott would have had a layup, wasn't ready for the inbound pass, and the Winthrop Eagles turn it over, their third turnover here in the first half. Asheville's been out in front by a couple of possessions since we started in what has been a battle defensively between these teams, and there's an Asheville turnover. Larry Brown just ran around the pass, very active on the defensive end, Larry Brown is. A lot of movement on this offense. I love it. They're getting the defense in the scramble. He walked. Oh, he hopped his feet. They didn't call it. And Jerome got away with it and drew the contact from Roberts. Joab Jerome, the guy, Nate, that Winthrop really needs to step up today. He had a tough day yesterday offensively. Split the defenders right there. Yeah, he did. And he's the, he's the leader on this basketball team. He's a senior. He's the guy that plays best in big games. He didn't play great yesterday. He played okay, but they're in another situation. 2 of 11 from the field yesterday in the win over High Point. Two rebounds and six points. But a guy that can slash, get to the foul line, and make some things happen, and he is a senior that has uh, the maturity that you want in these situations. A big game from him today, really key, I think. Doesn't take a lot of threes, but he shoots almost 50% from downtown. So, once again, big shots in big situations. Roberts had the rebound, lost it, but it will go off Larry Brown. That's funny. Jaleel Roberts lost the rebound. Take a seat, son. We'll put the big man back in. It's all right. That's all cutting in meters. A little blow. Again, Asheville yesterday only went seven deep. And you and I looked at each other. That was kind of shocking when you look at the final box and you mistake. had a chance for yeah. the dust to settle. It seemed like there was more 
depth utilized by Nick McDevitt, and he's got players he can go to. We may see him stretch the bench a little more today. A beautiful stroke from Jerron Lane. He's got five in the first half, knocking down the three. Early offense, like you talked about, pick and pop for three. Oh, he banked it. And Vega brings Winthrop right back to within four. Both teams doing a great job of changing style. He wasn't ready at a layup. Nashville turns it over for the fifth time. And the way that they play, they do have a propensity sometimes to get some high turnover numbers. The tap by Brown, what a play. As the ball came just delicately off the rim, and Larry Brown had a fingertip right there. Larry Brown's only 6'6", but he plays hard, and he's got great hops and quick hops. Look at that help defense, doing a great job in that zone. Little John drills the three. Corey Little John, UNC Asheville, the junior out of Columbia, and he's not the guy that you're going to expect to, to drill a lot of threes on you, but got that one to go. Vega in some trouble, finds Jerome. Vega lost the ball about four times. Deion Johnson answers from distance. Very efficient games on both ends. This is what semifinal basketball should be about. Great basketball game. Cunningham, after Brown fell down, missed the shot. Prescott flies in for the rebound. Winthrop can lead with a three. Jerome will take it himself and a tie game. That's what Jerome can do. Big athlete at 6'5", just under 200 LBs, and very aggressive as everybody with a maroon jersey is on today. Nice pass. Cunningham steadies himself and hits the lay-in. Just so calm and collected inside when he gets the ball in scoring range. He's got great balance. He never loses his balance inside. He's very good around the basket with either hand. Winthrop's made this push over the last couple of minutes offensively without Keon Moore as Jerome gets in tight and draws the contact right into the body of D.J. Cunningham. That's perfect. Take it right into the chest of the shot blocker. and you got the foul. We have found ourselves a rhythm in semi Eagles. Jerome with three points already after six in the quarterfinal yesterday. Like we said, uh, Winthrop has no 6'10 guys. Bunch of 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, really long, very athletic, very, very aggressive playing forwards. And in the semifinals because of it. Jerome out of Marietta, Georgia, a senior. He's had some success in this building last year in the quarterfinal round. Had a, a big shot to get past Radford in overtime in the first round. Winthrop trying to reach the championship game and pick up a title. They've been the, at least in terms of total championships over the past decade plus, the, the dominant team in the Big South. A lot of that work done by Greg Marshall, who of course is now the headline of college basketball with the unbeaten Wichita State Shockers. Rousey off the screen, a little bit short, and Winthrop can go back in front. He's not Marshall Henderson, but he's only a freshman. He's not far behind as far as his prowess and he's going to do the rest of his career. And as Moxie, nice job by Lane. He started the turnover. And here's Little John with the finish off the mark. And out of bounds off Winthrop and Larry Brown went down awkwardly, and he is still down. Well, Little John started the whole thing and kind of misstepped. Then Larry Brown and Rousey, and everybody's hurting a little. You know as soon as we find out anything. And his knee really took a, a serious torque as it came in behind Rousey watching that replay. When they left lane wide open, Davenport boards the miss. This field's going a bit cold here. Jerome leaves it for Bourne. Power move over Cunningham with the left hand. Nicely done. Well, you got one on the big guy. You might as well keep taking it at him. You get two on him. Cunningham's going to have to sit. Winthrop's first lead since the 1831 mark of this first half. So 10 minutes since they've been back in front. Whistle and a travel on Rousey. 
It's a 3-2 zone. There's a little opening in the middle, but when you try to dribble drive it, they collapse on you pretty good, and Rousey shuffle the feet before you put it on the floor. So 8-20, and the Eagles up by two. That's still going man the entire half so far. That's normally what they play. But Little John wants to jump every passing lane. Be careful with this guy. He'll beat you on the dribble. Jerome, a good look at a three. Bourne tried to tap it out, but Jerron Lane comes away with it. Little John's hurting. I don't know if he twist, twisted his ankle or jammed his heel on the ground. He's hurting a little bit on that right leg. So Corey Little John limping to the Asheville bench, and injuries have been a story in this one early on. 7.50 left for Ray Smith to knock out the number one overall seed, High Point. And then a double overtime game last night between Coastal Carolina and Charleston Southern, and the Shawna clears the host school able to survive by five points. Nashville looking to get its offense going again here. They've struggled over the last few possessions. And a steal for James Bourne. Takes it right out of the hands of Lane. Jerron Lane took advantage of mismatches yesterday to score easily in the second half. Winthrop hanging their hat on their defense. That's what they do under Coach Kelsey, and they're playing it pretty well in the first half. It's the release foul. If nobody's open, Bourne will just pop up because Cunningham's not going out there with him, and he shouldn't. Eight on the clock, Davenport finds a lane to the basket, collision, it will count, and a blocking foul. Sam Hughes leaves his feet. He drew two charges early yesterday. If he stays on the ground, it's a charge. Oh, excuse me, I thought he left his feet. That was Cunningham. That's a close call. Well, the rules are different this year. Yep. It's any upward motion. He was not set before upward motion began. That's a good call. That is a good call. That was the epitome of the rule yep. change. That would have been a charge last year because Hughes was outside the half circle. So Davenport... One of the Winthrop newcomers this year out of Cincinnati, the 6'5 freshman, a big three-point play. And this is the largest lead for the Eagles. Their run now 12-2 to two to get back in front. Hey, go to your man. You got to go to Rousey. You got to go to Cunningham. Somebody's got to make a big shot. Look, oh, I thought he'd look at this. Rousey got himself free on the shot fake. But he has struggled after the hot start. He scored eight points of Asheville's first 10, but hasn't scored since then. And here come the Eagles with a seven-point lead on the Prescott slam follow. Anytime your big man goes for the block, Cunningham goes for the block. Nobody on Prescott. That has not been done a lot through the years in college tournaments. Certainly not impossible, but it's usually not probable because of your depth and the amount of games in a short period of time. Fatigue usually sets in. Jerron Lane, a very good security blanket to go to when you need a basket. Excellent call from Coach McDivitt and his staff off the bench. They got Jerron Lane on a short curl and got him a four-footer over a smaller defender. Once again, taking advantage of the matchups. Winthrop shooting 62% and Josh Davenport Picks up another bucket. He has played big off the bench. A little flex screen action off the, off the baseline cut. Easy one. Five points now for Davenport. What a great play by Jerron Lane. Bulldogs nearly gave it away again. They've turned it over six times in the first half. And he's the double team and a slap away. And he's pretty good about dealing with double teams because he gets double teamed a lot. Hangs in there and saves the possession. Shot clock at six. Two you one with the rock right here. Shot clock at two. Robertson gets a pretty good look and buries it late in the clock. Clutch shot. That is such a huge play besides the three points because Winter played great defense for 34 seconds and got beat by a three. Great ball movement. Great pass by Rousey. Nashville's 4-3 in this game, and they used the three-pointer effectively yesterday, hitting nine against Bradford in the quarterfinal as Keon Johnson flies through the lane and will get to the foul line. They got to deal with Johnson. He's hurt them on penetration. Drive and kick, drive and shoot, drive and draw a foul. He's very, very 
quick, only 5'7", but he's lightning quick. Talked about the rotation for Nick McDevitt in Asheville. Now that could change. Sam Hughes just picked up his third foul. All in this first half, of course, and that uh, could see him come out of the game and stretch the bench. And all the assistants, he's holding up three fingers and trying to get Coach McDivitt's attention. Now That's, they're going to go really small. Yeah, I think they're having that discussion over there now. Is you know, Maybe we see player number eight or nine come into the game at least to steal a few minutes. Well, they put Corey Littlejohn in now, so obviously his ankle's okay. So it's Littlejohn along with Robertson and Rousey, three-guard lineup. Keon Johnson's had a nice game in this first half. He's hit both of his field goal attempts, now has eight points. He'll get a rest. Brandon Vega comes in, and Nate, we can't forget, Winthrop has done this damage without Andre Smith. Yesterday's hero, he got two early fouls. He's been on the bench since back around the 17-minute mark. And you can go with a smaller lineup against Winthrop because they don't have great size. And a reach in here, and Joab Jerome will get the foul. There's another one. Cunningham goes up to the high post. Jerron Lane's got a free lane to the basket. They collapse. They foul him. Can't drive, obviously, when the guy's in the low post or even on the weak side because the help defense can come. Jerron Lane's really good at reading that. Cunningham isolated on the smaller Prescott. And the foul called on Tevin Prescott. Cunningham does a thing that a lot of basketball players don't do anymore. He's a great pivoter. Watch this. Now he'll pivot, and he draws a foul, but that pivot foot, that left foot stays on the ground. Very, very fundamentally sound. They'll go right back to the same situation. Cunningham on Prescott, and he'll draw another foul. Number two on Tevin Prescott. Now you've got seven fouls on each team. And there's the reverse pivot for a shot. We used to have all these pivoting drills from uh, – the head coach, Kevin Cantwell, when I was at Appalachian, who lives in Asheville, he might be working with Cunningham. The kid's a great pivoter. People don't do that anymore. Keep your balance, pivot, and with that big body, you get great advantage with taking one step. Cover a lot of space. Oh, we absolutely. saw that yesterday against Radford. He was able to step three, four feet past the defender just off the pivot. And he's a 70% free throw shooter. All good things. Big guys get fouled a lot. Most of them aren't good free throw shooters. He is. I got a theory about that, too. They release the ball from such a high point that they don't arc it like a six-footer would. And it's a tougher angle to shoot it. But if you repeat it and practice it, you get a result like that. I was so afraid he was going to miss that after saying that. That was a significant setup. He had to hit that free throw. Yes. That's good work, though. We worked on it in practice. I said, I'm going to talk about it. you got to make the shot. James Bourne back for Winthrop, by the way, after Prescott's two quick fouls trying to guard Cunningham. Keon Moore creates some space. What a pretty shot he has. The junior who transferred from Catawba College of the Division II ranks. He had a big game yesterday with 21, leading Winthrop in the win over High Point. Robertson went under the screen. You can't do that on a shooter like that. And he got burned. Got to fight through the screen. Eagles have equaled their largest lead again, and they have scored on 12 of 14 possessions, but David Robertson has an answer. The mentality of a shooter is, I don't care if I screwed up on defense, give me the rock. Freshman sticks it. How about Robertson? He's been big on a couple of three-pointers when they've needed them. Jerome fighting inside. Keeps it alive and somehow taps it in, and he has a, a stare down as he backs up the floor. He tapped it. It happened to go in. I don't think he tapped it in. He wanted a foul, too. He thought he got bumped by a couple guys, including Cunningham. Little John on the take. Battle inside, and Davenport able to tip it over to Vega. Well, they're gang rebounding and keeping Cunningham occupied with different people. More a wide open look. He just can't leave him that wide open. And the Eagles have their largest lead of the half, shooting 64%. Timeout, UNC Asheville. In the timeouts, because he's a very good basketball player, as evidenced by his performance this year and especially yesterday. Long way to go, but he can't let it get to him. And the Winthrop scoring distribution has been impressive. 41 points, no one in double figures yet. That's a clear out for Jerron Lane all by himself on that side. And he'll get the basket and one. And that's the second time after Nick McDevitt's taken a timeout to stop the run. He's gone to Lane. He's produced. He's cleared out. The help side come over. They grabbed at the ball. 
and one. Build this lead. Well, Winthrop usually beats you with the defense. I mean, they play tough defense. They stop you from doing what you're doing, what you want to do, I should say. But they're hitting a ton of wide open shots, getting misses and going. That's a big free throw right there. Jerron Lane with three more completing that three-point play. He's into double digits with 10 in the half, and Asheville goes to pressure. I was just thinking, you know, is it too early to put a little pressure on him? But Coach McGibbon and I are thinking the same, and they did. And then not so necessary to turn it over, but to create a bad shot, a quick shot. Get big Mr. Cunningham, get a rebound, and go. Zone defense for the Bulldogs. First time today. 2-3 zone. Cunningham in the middle where he should be. But Moore gets a good look over it, and that's the last guy Asheville wants wide open against the zone. Keon Moore starting to heat up. He's hit a couple of big threes in this first half and now has 11 points. Cunningham had to get to the corner, and he couldn't because he had to run around a screen. Look at this. Fights his way through and gets it, doesn't he? He's just, it's like there's nobody on the floor when he makes a post move. It's like there's no defense. Eight points for Cunningham. Back to man. A little Rousey looking back to try to maybe get a steal out of it. It's a good shot from up top. The great spacing by Winter. They spread you out so you can. Oh, what a great cut, and they missed him. Tried to get your own on the back screen in the back cut. That's a great shot from up top. Sixth Winthrop turnover of the half, both teams with six and that particular category here at the 152 mark. It's been a quality offensive game. Now, a guy that UNC Asheville needs back in the mix, the man with the ball right here, Andrew Rousey. He has not scored since nearly the 16-minute mark after eight early points as Cunningham missed the jump hook. Good move to go to the left hand, but he can't fade away with it. He, his balance is usually so good, he was kind of off balance on that one. But I like going into him. If he gets doubled, he's good enough to pass out of it and find an open man. There's a guy has been hot. Nearly got that one to go off balance, trying to draw contact. And that's the only reason he shot it, and he almost made it. You're absolutely correct. Those hands. Hands. Great catch, keeps the ball high, finishes. Asheville back to within five. There's a senior with a kid that was in high school last year, just connecting with eye contact. Great two-man play. Jerome got some space. The Asheville coaches screaming for a push-off. Joab Jerome now with nine points. Step back is kind of the shot of the decade, and he's good at it. Another one on the big man for Winthrop. Jerome, or excuse me, Bourne. Religion inside, so David Robertson will get himself to the line. Outside the arc, but obviously moving laterally. The thing that makes... Uh, well, they got Keon Johnson, I think, Nate, actually oh, okay, before, before the collision. The thing that makes Robertson such a good driver as a freshman is obviously he's capable of bombing it and making it, so you've got to honor that. And if you close out, out of balance, he'll blow right by you. Freshman out of Cary, North Carolina, over by the Raleigh area. Brandon Vega checks in for Winthrop. We'll give Keon Johnson some rest here in the final 46 seconds. Plus, he has two fouls, so you don't want him picking up a cheap one. Be a big defensive stand for Asheville. If they can stop Winthrop, obviously they can shoot quick and shoot deep and cut this deficit going in the locker room. 2-2-1 once again, just to maybe deflect something. Maybe once it takes a quick pass, and then they go with it. What a Ooh. tough pass by Davenport to Moore, but it set him up pretty well. And look at him elevate and finish over Cunningham. Cunningham didn't want to commit that third foul. I believe he has two coming in. Well, you can't guard him too far away because they can shoot it from anywhere. Shot clock off. Bulldogs will wait for the final shot. Robertson working against Vega. Ten on the clock. Ron Lane. Little John, a good-looking three off the mark. Cunningham the rebound, and he's fouled with 2.6. That'll be Brandon Vega on the personal. The execution on play was perfect except the shotgun win. Watch Cunningham where he goes. Right to the weak side. Most misses go to the weak side. He's in perfect rebounding position. Gets it, tries to get an advantage with the power dribble, and gets hacked. 
Cunningham a perfect four for four from the line in this first half. A well-drilled basketball team. They just haven't made a lot of shots in this half. Now that man's going to have 2.6 to get it down the floor or stop it and get everybody on the same pace to go 2.6. 11 points for Cunningham, four rebounds. Has not used a timeout. I would think Coach Kelsey might stop it or he might, well, no, you lose it anyway. He's going to call it. He just told the referee, I want the timeout. Won't get a chance to lane the rebound. The tap, not there by Little John. Asheville had a great chance to get it to four at the buzzer. And Lane had 2.6, and I don't think he realized it. So we're at the break, and an impressive in highest field goal percentage in a uh, Big South Conference semifinals in one half. So that's how epic their offensive uh, display was. Winthrop with the ball first to start our second half, 20 minutes away from one team. Locked into the championship game tomorrow. And Keon Johnson is a tough, ma tough matchup for anybody because he can hit threes. He can drive, and he's really, really quick. And Roberts is starting out on him. Moore sets up. Johnson steps into a three. And the rebound pulled by Rousey. That's only Winthrop's third miss from three-point range today. Five of eight. He said Rousey started off hot, but only took four shots in the first half. I would assume he'll take more than that in this half. Ron Lane was kind of the designated scorer guy when they needed one. They just kind of ISO'd him and let him go. Granted, he's working against Keon Moore, a pretty good defender right now, but that might be not, 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 I'll say in a minute, that might not be the matchup they're looking for defensively. Trying to get Rousey going early. Not that time off the front rim. But a rebound for D.J. Cunningham keeps it alive. Cunningham's getting a little mad. That's a good thing. He just can't go over the line. Well, they left him wide open. Somehow he split that double team and scores. Cunningham with 13. I'm telling you, I've never said this about a player. He's the best pivoter I've ever seen. He's so good at it. Keeps his balance and knows where he is on the floor. He knows what's going on in that paint area. He's tough. Andre Smith for Winthrop did not play much in that first half. Because of the two fouls, let's see if he becomes a factor. One of their key starters. Only played five minutes in the first half. Got two early ones. Here's Born. Moore. High off the glass, off the mark. Bourne's limp a little bit coming up the floor. I don't know if he got twisted or kicked. The big man for Winter's hurting a little bit. Cunningham has been the offense for the Bulldogs. The jump hook too strong. He had scored on five of the last six possessions. He's complaining to the refs on every call. The referee's just going to tune him out. They really are. you just you got to stop doing that. You know, Winthrop has not started as hot as they were in the first half. They've had a couple of good looks, not going down. Asheville a chance to get within two or closer here. And there's number three on Andre Smith as Rousey drove past him. Great shot fake. And you got to honor it because the kid's such a good outside shooter. That's a, that's a tough foul. I mean, it is a foul, no question. Watch this. Shot fake, and he bumped him. Any restriction of movement is a foul this year. It's been a foul since the first game in late, early November. It's a foul on Smith, unfortunately. What a phenomenal game yesterday, and what a frustrating game for the young man today so far. They only need him when there's five seconds to go anyway. Smith out, Vega in at the point. Larry Brown is back for the Eagles. Boy, Boy Rousey went right <laughs> past him, though. You could see there that Brown is struggling. Rousey on that hedge out was able to go right past Larry Brown for the points. Here's Vega, the wraparound pass, and it rolls out of bounds, and here come the Bulldogs. They have the momentum now. Rousey's been in a lot of pickup games. This is not a game you learn on a college basketball court. That's a reverse up and under over a bigger player, and once again, a great shooter. You heard it said a thousand times when he sees it go through the net. No matter how, free throw layup, he just might start lighting up. Look at it, he's got another layup. And we're tied at 48, and here comes Andrew Rousey. Timeout, Pat Kelsey. And that was two situations there where Larry Brown got kind of caught up in the wash. We'll take a break. Eagle power, baby, eagle power. Eagles lost a little power the last couple of minutes because of Andrew Rousey. Winthrop has not scored in the second half. A 6-0 Asheville run has tied the score. And that erases what at one point in the first half for Winthrop was a nine-point lead. It's the perfect scenario going down in the locker room, going down six, score the first six. And a foul on Corey Littlejohn with the 
the arm bar on Keon Moore. And, and just to underscore how good Winthrop's offense was in the first half, they never went through more than two possessions without a, a basket, without points. Big time. And here in this second half, they've already had four straight empty ones. Not switching as much as they did on screens early in the first half. They went to that zone very, very short period of time. Boy, Cunningham was pounced and ready to block that one. But Jerome, Joab Jerome kept his patience in the post, took a six-footer, made it. First basket for the Eagles in the half. 11 points for Jerome today. He's had a nice game, four of eight shooting. Added three rebounds as well. We talked about biggest games he plays the best. Here's the one-on-one. -on -one. They clear it out again. Jerron Lane goes right back at Jerome after Jerome had hit the basket over Lane at the other end. He counters to tie it at 50. I believe that's called deja vu all over again. Yesterday he had a phenomenal second half by taking advantage of taking advantage of matchups. Flex action, a little flex cut by Winthrop. Baseline screen, down screen. Boy, is he quick, Johnson. Whew. Vega got a step, and there's Cunningham to erase it. And he keeps it in bounds. That's such a great asset. So is this guy. Rousey short on the pull-up. Rebound to Flex out to Vega. Or to Johnson, rather. Cunningham busting it to get back. Inside, Larry Brown. He gets two on the feed. Nice feed from Johnson. And Brown still favoring that leg, but able to elevate to get the lay-in. Tough kid. We saw him when he first started to warm up at halftime. He grimaced a little bit, and he looked at the coach and said, I'm okay. He's not going to tell anybody he's hurt. If there's no structural damage, the kid wants to play. Now to clear out. And a foul by Joab Jerome, and that will be his second. They do a great job of getting out of the way of the driver. Asheville, very good spacing. Winthrop has won it nine times, most of that under Greg Marshall. Pat Kelsey, the second-year head coach, hoping to score his first championship get to the title game tomorrow with a win today but Asheville won the title in 11 and 12 took a championship back in 2003 so these two teams have dominated that championship trophy here's Cunningham inside powers his way for two more 15 for the red shirt senior I don't care who's guarding him if he gets it that deep he's going to score every time and probably more times than not get a chance for 9-1 Great patience to wait for him, and then a great pass to get him. Along with Nate Ross, Matt Hogue with you from the HTC Center, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Winthrop led by six at halftime, but they've cooled off from a hot offensive start. And another miss there by Joab Jerome. The Eagles at one point were shooting 67%. Little John in transition, and Keon Moore fights his way through to strip the ball out of bounds. You, know, you love Cunningham's points, but the thing that impresses me as a former coach more than anything else he gets every defensive rebound. I mean, he, it's one and done when he's in the basketball game. He's so good at clearing the defensive board. And you give a team one shot only, unless they're really hot, as Winthrop was in the first half, they're not going to shoot more than 50%. Yeah, Winthrop just two of seven and half number two. Asheville five for eight. He's gotten them back into the game. Triple team, and he's patient enough to get rid of it. Look out. Rousey, a great look, and he rattles it in. Andrew Rousey's been key in the second half now, 15 points. And that's the first UNC Asheville lead since Cunningham put them in front by two with 10 minutes to play in the first half. And Rousey will reach in here on Vega. We had the same angle you're going to have right there. It rattled a little bit, but he makes more than he misses. Great shot. It's amazing how you make a shot and you get all jacked up on defense. The second three like that, the that Rousey has hit today. And the freshman of the year starting to take his game up in this second half. That's now seven second half points for Rousey. It's saying something. He had some competition in that race as well. QJ Peterson, of course, from VMI. Good freshman in this league. A lot of talent. Davenport, great step to the goal. Misfires. There's Brown, though, with the and one and a chance to tie the game. And Josh Davenport slow to get up for Winthrop. Well, we'll see Davenport's shot. Hopefully about three guys in white jerseys, including Cunningham, went after it. And then there's number two, three, Larry Brown, with the putback and a little emotion. 
and he feels pretty good right now, I bet. And the foul whistled on Andrew Rousey, so he picks up two in a short span. And Brown a chance to, to tie the game. And how about Larry Brown? He was injured at the nine-minute mark of the first half. Really scary-looking in injury the way his left knee hyperextended. He goes out. Didn't know if he would even return to play at all, but he's come into the game and picked up a couple of important baskets. And some great drugs that modern medicine has provided. But the greatest one of all of them is adrenaline. And he's got it going right now. The kid's not structurally damaged, thank goodness. And he's fired up. He's going to live with ice after this game's over if they win or even if they lose. But he's ready to roll right now. Seven ties now. Four out, one in. All oh, trying to get the ball to Cunningham or get a penetration move. What Robertson a... back door, but the ball slips out of bounds. It will be long to the Winthrop Eagles. Talked about great spacing, and then Jerron Lane and Cunningham got too close together, and they lost their spacing through the basketball away. Good defense by that man's team. They're going to get in your face. 55 apiece. Eagles won yesterday on a last-second three by Andre Smith to knock out high point. Maybe headed to another fantastic finish here today. Keon Moore, a strong drive, and Moore with 16 in the game. Keon Moore, Joab, Jerome, all those guys use their length. Jerron Lane used their length to get off shots when they are contested by the defenders. Lane didn't really catch the ball well there. Misfires on the three. Winthrop a 5-0 run. Looking to extend it. Jerome, a great step through, and the foul is whistled on Jerron Lane. We'll see it here on the drive. Yeah, he got him. Got him on the hand. Good call. By Anthony Franklin. Joe Ab Jerome will shoot a pair, three of four from the line today. The Senior forward has 11 points. Eagles trying to extend that lead. They fell behind by three, but have gotten on a run here. 6-0 now with the free throw. Andre Smith returns for the Eagles. There you see him, number 11 with three fouls. Tevin Prescott also back for Pat Kelsey. I would think whoever is Smith is guarding, He's going to make some kind of move because the young man obviously knows he has three, doesn't want four. Got to take advantage of that. And Nick McDivitt and staff have done a great job of picking the matchups they want and attacking those matchups. Larry Brown goes out for the Eagles, so it'll be interesting to see how he looks when he comes back if that knee starts to, to freeze up on him a little bit. He was on the exercise bike well, behind the bench. He may go back to that. I agree. If he's, that's the worst thing is to sit there. you got to keep it moving. If he just jumps around a little bit, exercise bike's perfect, but he seems to be okay. 7-0 Winthrop run. Let's see if Asheville has an answer. Lane is bumped and will get to the foul line. Very smart there. Heard the whistle and threw it up. Tried to get an and one. He's, a sec he's been a second-half player in this tournament so far. Yesterday, unbelievable. Pretty productive today as well. Now Winthrop has had foul issues with Andre Smith. Now they have them with Joe Ab Jerome, the senior starter. He picks up his third with still 12.06 left. There is more depth on the Winthrop bench, or at least coach for the Winthrop uh, team has used more than the Asheville coaches have as far as going deeper into the bench. And Larry Brown's not going to get a chance to get it stiff at all. He's coming right back in. Jerron Lane, a monster second half in yesterday's quarterfinal win over Radford. 24 points. Came in the second half. He finished with 29. And a fifth-year senior who is connected back to Asheville's back-to-back -back titles in 2011 and 2012. Splits a pair at the line. Went for it by three. This is a really small team for Asheville. There's no big man in the game. Sam Hughes back on the floor. He plays with three fouls. Cunningham getting a rest ahead of the media timeout. And no Jaleel Roberts, so they're really little. That's what you got to do when you got no size against you. And Keon Johnson, he is tough to deal with. Kind of a Michael Adams type player. Low center of gravity. Rousey in some trouble. Loose ball, out of bounds. It will be Asheville basketball. And that will send us to a break. Everybody giving its all to try to get to the championship. Hi. 
And then the championship tomorrow at noon in the VisitMyrtleBeach.com Big South Championships. Second game's got some prolific scores as well. BMI, of course, leads the nation, but Coastal's got Gillis. Coastal's got some kids who can put it in, too. A lot of athleticism in that front line for Coach Cliff Ellis. Cunningham on the post move and just fights his way through Larry Brown. Cunningham continues to have a sensational game. 17 points now, 7 rebounds. Andre Smith, it's been a, a dry game for him. Ball out of bounds, it will belong to Asheville. You know, when Cunningham makes that move, a lot of guys make that spin move and shoot it right away. He makes the spin move and doesn't shoot it. Waits for the defense to commit, and he's got the strength and the balance to get the shot off, and he's got really good touch around the basket. One of the stories in this game, Winthrop's Andre Smith, yesterday's hero, 0 for 2 from the field, no points. He's had foul trouble all day. He's played only eight minutes. Just missed that three-pointer. Here's Corey Littlejohn to Robertson. Asheville has not played a lot of players, just seven-player rotation. Yesterday's game and so far today, Brown fighting hard, knocks the ball loose, keeps it alive, and look at that play. Here's Keon Johnson. And just got caught in the air with nowhere to go, and here come the Bulldogs with a chance to cut it to one, and they do on the alley-oop to Lane. Great communication, great execution for an easy win in transition. A big turnaround there. Winthrop could have pushed that lead back to five. And here's Rousey in a step through. And he'll head to the line to try to give Asheville the lead. And I really thought he was going to stop and pull up for a three there. I really did because he had little John going underneath for the rebound. He's a special player for a freshman. He really is. He's good. You think juniors do that. Drives, gets hacked big time, tried to get the shot off. Of course, we'll get two at the line. Here's the alley Look at this pass. Just throws it up across the rim. Ron Lane finishes the deal. Great play. Boy, two crucial turnovers by Winthrop. Johnson got caught in the air and had nobody to pass to. And then, and then Johnson also made the pass that Rousey stepped in front of. After the great Larry Brown steal, I think Johnson thought somebody trailing was going to come. There was nobody there. This young man, right place at the right time. Tough, tough kid. So those two Winthrop turnovers lead to a dunk and a couple of free throws for Asheville, and they go back in front by one. Talk about a game of runs. Here we go. 6-0 run for the Bulldogs now. As we near the halfway point of the second half. Drama building from the HTC Center in Myrtle Beach. Jerome sizes up a three and buries one. He took his time, found the line, and drilled it. Penetration and kick for three. Jerome's first three-pointer since going back to Wednesday in the opening round win over Liberty. No double team this time. Cunningham, the step through. That is a thing of beauty. We're tied at 64. You can't let him go one-on-one. If you're with him, he's going to score every time or get fouled every time. It's just you got to double him, take the ball out of his hand. They forced him out of his favorite spot. Watch how far away he catches it. But that doesn't matter. Larry Brown's doing a good job in banging him. But the step through and the touch around the basket chance for an N1. You know, we said no, that they almost had three guys 20, 20, 20. They might get it tonight. They might get three with 20. Spins out for Cunningham, so we remain tied. The tough thing, Nate, with Cunningham is you he's so good even out of a double team, you have to be careful that you don't allow one of those open shooters on the perimeter. A great court presence. He knows where everybody else on the floor is, and they do a good job of spacing and making themselves available for an open three if you do double them. I mean, it's, it's, the, good, it's the offense suited to the personnel. Well, Rousey doing a tremendous job on Johnson, nearly a five count, and here is Brown going to the basket, will shoot two. Boy, Jerry Heater stuck the whistle in his mouth to tee up Cunningham. He's got to keep his mouth shut. If it's a good call or not, it's not about that. It's about winning the basketball game. And Jerry Heater's not going to take any stuff from him. Well, yesterday Cunningham did a great job Avoiding fouls. He's done a pretty good job with that again today. He has only two. Exactly. Both teams have five personals. So nearing the bonus as Brown hits a clutch free throw. 
Coaching is such psychology, and the psychology for Nick McDivitt is push him till his anger is a competitive advantage, not so it goes over the line so it becomes a competitive disadvantage. Get him upset so he goes up there and rebound like that. That's a good thing. In this second half, D.J. Cunningham, Andrew Rousey, Jerron Lane, the only players to score for UNC Asheville. That terrific threesome who put up the big numbers yesterday in the quarterfinal. Cunningham, or rather Little John, got a step, locked away by Brown. Boy, has Larry Brown shown you some toughness. Big time. Here's Vega. Cut off in the paint. And Rousey almost knocked it loose from behind. Cunningham almost knocked it free. Cunningham loves to run through passing lanes. Get burned sometimes when you do that, but you get the occasional steal. And you can see Little John just getting very close to picking up that foul. He was getting after everyone on the perimeter. That'll be the sixth against Asheville, the third against Corey Littlejohn. I mean, it's not, nobody's going to run away with this. It's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a close game. It will be right down to the buzzer. Sam Hughes goes out of the Asheville lineup. Jerron Lane back in at the 828 mark. A lot of coaches shorten their bench when they get in the conference play. Coach McDivitt has shortened his bench tremendously in this tournament. Jerome, nice head fake on Lane, takes the contact. Ball out of bounds off Cunningham. That's great verticality by the big man. Yes, there was contact, but you as a defender are entitled to that vertical plane. Watch him go straight up and not swipe down. That's called incidental contact. That's not a foul. That's really good post play on the defensive end. It's getting a little chippy out there on both sides. I mean, there's a lot at stake. I don't blame him. Just don't go over the line, guys. Survivor trying to get to the championship game. Keon Moore. Haven't heard from him in a while. Went to trying to get him back involved. The leading scorer today. Davenport, nice give and go with Bourne. Terrific offense. Excellent pass. Patience, run your sets. Asheville tasted the lead. Now Winthrop back up by three. Vega tried to slide around for the foul and or for the steal, rather, and got the foul, and that'll send us to a break. 7.45 left. Down the stretch we go with a terrific percentage. But his team down a possession at the moment. It is Asheville ball. Cunningham, Rousey, Little John, Robertson, Jerron Lane, the five for the Bulldogs. How's he shot fakes basically every time? So you got to honor it, and then he can do that. And I got it knocked loose. Quick hands by Davenport, popped it loose. Here's Keon Moore. Dribbled it right into traffic. Moore wanted to make a move on lane, and the help side defense from Robertson stole the ball but could not control it. A lot of contact. Nick McDevitt very upset. The Asheville coach. I thought Keon Moore popped him too. Watch this. There's the steal. There's one foul. There's another one. He restricted him. You can't restrict movement. They've been letting him play. They haven't called all the ticky tack stuff. So I guess he did. But that man's a little frustrated on that call because it happened right in front of him. Winthrop's lineup: Brandon Vega, James Bourne, Joab, Jerome, Josh Davenport, Keon Moore, Andre Smith. Not in the game. He's been saddled with fouls today. Joab Jerome with the ball here, playing with three fouls. Keon Moore now with it. Their leading scorer on the afternoon. A couple of shot fakes, forces it up and got it over the top of Robertson. Moore with 18 to lead the Eagles. Boy, Robertson draws some tough matchups. Keon Moore, very athletic move there. Ron Lane has it blocked by Davenport. James Bourne secures the rebound and he is fouled. And this will put the Eagles into the bonus with a five point lead at the 635 mark. I don't know if that's a foul or a jump ball. It's 
funny. The ball ended up right in front of Nick McDivitt. He put his foot on it, and he thought about, let me just leave it here because they got to come over and talk to me to get it. But then he rolled it to him. That wasn't much of a roll. That was a uh, he, got, he, in, he in, initiated in a motion. Pass. <laughs> no, it's like maybe make a point. He used to be a point guard. He's good at delivering the ball to the right people. Bourne rattles it in. The left-hander. James Bourne with five points. 63%. You got to be ready for the miss here both ways. Winthrop at the 70-point mark. 54 of their points today have come from the starters. All four of players in double figures, four of the five starters. Andre Smith, the only one who has not scored of the starters, and he had the shot that got him here, the three-pointer yesterday over high point. And Asheville needs a basket. They've come up empty four straight times. That time they double-teamed him. Cunningham has some range, a little strong, though, and Vega, a nice box out. That's not his shot. Especially down six, that's not his shot. The Eagles up by six with six to play. Jerome, the spin. Nice dump inside for Bourne. Blocked by Lane. Bourne another time. And Cunningham fouled him. Tee him up. And he just got teed up as well. That's tough. And Good call. This is a serious turn of events from the UNC Asheville perspective because this also could be a flagrant one if they go to the video review. Well, it's a personal and a technical, so that's two fouls on him. But you had contact. Above the shoulder. That took place above the shoulder, the grabbing of the head. Yeah, the rake is the second one. This is going to be two fouls on Cunningham, maybe flagrant. Yeah, that's going to be a flagrant one, I believe. He will now, have four fouls now because of the personal and then the technical becomes a personal foul. They're not even going to look at the video. They just made their mind up without the video. So... To sort this out, Winthrop is going to shoot a plethora of free throws here, to say the least, up by six. This could be the ball game. They could build a huge lead in this one. Still time, but it changes the whole complexion. We talked about his aggressiveness going over the line. It just went over the line a little bit. Game not over, but it did go over the line. Deion Moore splits one of two. And that was the technical, two technicals. And now James Bourne will shoot the flagrant free throws. Anthony Franklin's in a heated conversation. Cunningham better cool it or he's going to foul out with another tee. Well, Franklin, Anthony Franklin was not the official that gave him the, the technical foul. Bourne will have another. This could put Winthrop up by nine, a three-possession lead. And remember, after this is all done, they will have the ball. Well, the Eagles did not take full advantage of that. As they uh, hit just two of the four free throws. And they will have control with Keon Moore. An 8-0 run for Winthrop has put the Eagles in front by eight. If you heard that, Jerry Bourne said dead ball technical foul. You hit him in the face. Not a flagrant, okay. but a dead ball technical. So they agree without even looking at the video. So it was after the play. Did Correct. not have to Correct. go check to see if it was a flagrant one. We appreciate Jerry Heater giving us that clarification. Vega yep. lost the ball going up. I think all things considered, Asheville's come out of this in a lot better shape. Absolutely. No shot clock didn't start, and they stopped a fast break by Asheville. But the clock's shot, the shot clock didn't start. you got to stop it. That's unfortunate for this kind of happened last night to VMI, and Duke Bauckham went nuts because they took away a fast break opportunity. But if the clock doesn't start, the officials have to remedy it. Now, again, you go back to Let's go back to that sequence again. You do have the two fouls that went against D.J. Cunningham, number and that, that hurts and Nick four. McDevitt, no question. However, Winthrop went into that possession up six. They only came out of that possession up eight. They hit all four free yep. throws and convert. You're talking about a, a maybe insurmountable double-digit lead with only 550 left. Excellent point. Asheville can't lose your cool here. We got almost six minutes to play. This sucker's not over. If they start getting upset and frustrated and angry, it's ball game, and they're going to put Winthrop in the finals. Now they're going to – they have a stopwatch over there at the table, and Jerry Heater, along with Justin Porterfield and Anthony Franklin, Jerry Heater's taking charge now. We'll actually time how long it takes in real time to get up the floor. They'll take that off the game clock if it didn't run. I think the game clock did, the shot clock didn't. And they'll adjust the shot clock. 
and then we'll continue to play with Asheville basketball. Free timeout for both teams. So the clock will be changed to 538. That's the game clock. And now how much of the 35 came off to get to 38? That's what they're determining right now. Well, they just took 12 seconds off of the game clock from 550 down to 538. So you would figure. That math doesn't add up. And then you go to 33. Yeah, the 12, the 12 seconds seems like a lot, but perhaps the game clock did not start. True. After Vega lost the ball going up. Well, they're satisfied with what they timed it, and uh, here we go. So all things considered, even though Asheville did have that Rousey three taken away on the fast break, all things considered, I think the Bulldogs are still in pretty good shape. You've got to overcome eight points, but it could have been a lot worse. Lane gets a great look, and there you go. You're back to five. Their, kept their composure. Great timeout by Nick McDivitt right there. He's going to tell him, guys, we almost blew the basketball game because of the big guy. He's going to be speaking of the Bulldogs from Asheville. Tournament time, you got to have a little bit of everything. Well, Larry Brown recovered from that injury, didn't he? Brown has played terrific after returning from the injury. Couple of big buckets inside. Keon Johnson switched hands and hit it with the left. Cunningham landed on that left ankle and twisted it. What a play by Keon Johnson in midair. He switches to the left hand to avoid the blocked shot. Great double clutch. Watch 33 in the left ankle. He kind of loses his balance, tweaks that left ankle, but give Johnson credit for a great move. Cunningham right back up and at it, though. Oh, he'll be fine. A little ice tonight, that's all. Seen some terrific performances in this one. Gutty performances as well. Little John on the take. Sets up Rousey, and he buries a big three in a four-point game. He backed up as the ball was in the air. He knew he made it when he let it go. Rousey with 20. Now Winthrop has to answer. Keon Moore partially blocked, and it leads to a break. Another one? He is unconscious. Oh, oh. What a comeback. Pat Kelsey, I think, wants to take a timeout. He will at the 4-11 mark. It was on the brink for UNC Asheville after the DJ Cunningham technical. But Winthrop did not take full advantage of the free throws and the extra possession. Timeout by that young man as well, Pat Kelsey, because he realized Asheville was fired up. The crowd was fired up. Calm everybody down, especially his team. Each team with two timeouts as we near the four-minute mark. I like this trying to keep the ball out of Johnson's hands because he makes so many things happen when he has it. Poor Little John's got that job. I mean, other guys can't hurt you, but Johnson's just so quick with the basketball. Shot clock at nine. Whistle. Offensive foul. Andre Smith pushed off, and that's number four. Rousey makes threes. Rousey gets in your face and plays a little D. All play of the game, but the game ain't over yet. We're going to have a heck of a finish here. Asheville on a 9-2 run after D.J. Cunningham picked up a foul and a technical. It has fueled the Bulldogs. Rousey has hit back-to-back -back threes. Jerron Lane started it with a three, and now they can take the lead back after trailing by eight. And it's winning time. Great spacing, four out, big man in. Lane just able to get into spaces inside the paint. He'll get to the foul line. Larry Brown will get the Winthrop foul. That'll be his second. That's the eighth on Winthrop as a team. So both teams in the bonus on the next Asheville foul. Winthrop will go into the double bonus. And we talked about in the game yesterday, Jerron Lane along with D.J. Cunningham. They've been through the wars with this team. They've been in these situations before in tournament play. That's a great asset. And Rousey hasn't been, but he's just as good as they are. But they've been in there. Rousey's just playing lights out the whole season. He's a special freshman. These two seniors have been there, done that. Jerron Lane looking for his 20th point of the day. Moore. 
penetrates. Bounce pass to Brown. They'll reset. Nice play by Larry Brown. No reason to foul. Play defense. Deion Johnson again. The floater. And one. What a play by Johnson. Jerron Lane should have banked it. Johnson did bank it. When you get contact, it's too tough to hit the rim. Just throw it off the backboard. Right in the middle of the square. Bingo. Chance for three. It's a big free throw. because Nashville's capable of making threes, obviously. This puts it up more than one possession if he can convert. Deion Johnson with back-to-back -back super plays, floaters in the lane. The foul was against Robertson. Nope. And he did not hit the free throw. Brown went over the back trying to grab the rebounds. So not only do you not oh, get the two-possession lead, but you give Asheville free throws at the other end. And no clock. Clock's not going to run. 70% free throw shooter with no clock. Chance to set up a press. All kinds of things. Once again, no need to foul whether he makes two or misses two. Just play good defense if you're Asheville. He makes two, puts a little bit of heat on winter, but they would only obviously be up one. Fourth foul, charge to Larry Brown. Andre Smith has four for Winthrop. Joab Jerome, Keon Johnson both have three apiece. And D.J. Cunningham has four for Asheville. Lane Robertson and Little John all have three as Cunningham hits the first of two shots. Both teams in a double bonus and both have two timeouts. Possession arrow at the moment belongs to UNC Asheville. Cunningham can make it a one-point game. And he does. Timeout taken by UNC Asheville. That will leave Nick McDevitt with 180 to 79 Winthrop with 102 remaining. The winner gets a date in tomorrow's Big South Champ. Johnson setting something up. He's been so lightning quick when he gets into the lane. He scored every time, but I'm sure if they collapse on him, he's good enough to kick it out. They got a lot of athletic people, and then you gotta watch Joab Jerome on the offensive boards. There he is. They can use a lot of clock. Obviously, they have the lead. Plenty of time left, even if they use the whole clock for Asco, even if they score. Under 40 seconds on the game clock. Here we go with 10 on the shot clock. Johnson working little John. Oh, Blows right past him. Oh. Cunningham swats it away. Transition for Asheville. Shot clock is off. Nick McDevitt will take his last time out. And the Bulldogs will try to win it. With four fouls, he blocks it, and once again, he keeps it in the basketball. Possession arrow belongs to UNC Asheville. 27.4 left. Shot clock no longer a factor. Jerron Lane, Corey Littlejohn, DJ Cunningham, Andrew Rousey, David Robertson, the five on the floor for the Bulldogs. How quickly do they go here? Here's Lane on the isolation with Moore. Nearly threw it away, Rousey. Plenty of time. Ten on the clock. Rousey working Jerome. The drive, not there. Lane, the layup, not there. Fight for the rebound. Underneath. Everybody after the ball with .2 left. A held ball. Asheville will have possession, but no time for a catch and shoot. It was an absolute melee under the basket. Jerron Lane, a point-blank stick back that would not stay in the basket. Here we go. Watch this. He's right in front of the rim. He tried to shoot the rim instead of bank it. And every little John had it. He had it stripped loose. They have the athletes to tip the basketball, but you can't catch it. It has to be a tip with less than .4. Obviously, .2 is that. Winthrop up by one. Asheville again, no timeouts. You got... Now, Coach, now, this is a great move. Nick McDivitt's saying, look at the clock and put time back. Which That's a brilliant move. It's also getting him a timeout. Absolutely. For that reason, it's a brilliant move. Where they're not going to do it, I would beg them to do it. I look for Cunningham and Jerron Lane on the lob pass. You can't foul him if you're Winthrop. Throw it up to the rim. You know that Rousey can throw good lob passes. We've seen it. Here we go. I'd move a little bit. I wouldn't stand still so much. Rousey loops it in. Ball game over. Winthrop survives again. 80 to 79. Larry Brown tipped the basketball.